What's up, guys? I'm EJ, and I'm joined by Kendall. And thank you so much for checking out this edition of Draft Chatter, our new NBA draft series we launched just a week ago. Kendall, I'm really excited to have this conversation, particularly about the Golden State Warriors. Yeah, you know, obviously, look, if you're a Warriors fan, I would uh, hit the subscribe button now because, you know, very soon after this, we'll be releasing our uh, NBA Draft War Room video on the Golden State Warriors. We're hitting the Pacific Division, but this video in particular is not going to be about what the Warriors should do, but rather what the Warriors could be doing because, uh, obviously, there's a big, big scoop, a couple of big scoops out there about some workouts that they've had with some of the top prospects in this year's draft. Yeah, exactly. And, and again, you know, I, what I like about this, you know, in comparison to our virtual NBA draft war room, which great plug by Kendall, you guys definitely want to check those out. We've already finished the Eastern Conference. We're going with all 30 teams, which is a breakdown of kind of what we would do as these teams. Um, but really, you know, this conversation is more, again, like Kendall said, of what we are hearing the Warriors are doing as of right now. So let's get to that conversation. And, and, and what I found uh, these last few days, I thought was pretty fascinating. So According to Ethan Strauss from The Athletic, Warriors head coach Steve Kerr and other members were left super impressed from their time uh, with Israeli forward Denny Avdia. Strauss said the Warriors were not only impressed by the workout, but were, quote, also blown away during their meeting with Avdia and really came away with the idea that they thought he was just a really great kid and, and they were really impressed with their overall time with him. Meanwhile, next day, um, Marcus Thompson of The uh, Athletic uh, he says James Wiseman and Anthony Edwards also left a great impression on the Warriors during their workouts. Uh, Thompson says both players were described as beast during during their uh, during their sessions. Wiseman impressed with his size and skill, while Anthony Edwards apparently really really displayed some freakish athleticism that I think maybe even took the Warriors by surprise. So, Kendall, we're starting to get now some chatter about the Warriors and and what they may be doing for this draft. I think mean, they're the team in the top five. Or Definitely top five, I would say that's most intriguing considering they're also kind of a championship contender, you know, if things go right for them. What do you make of, of this stuff we have coming out of Golden State with first the the idea they were blown away by Avdia and then the next very next day, another report from the same outlet but different reporter saying that actually they were also were really, really impressed with Edwards and and um and and, and uh and t- uh Wyvern. Yes. Yeah. So, look, I mean, obviously, um, you know, the old adage has always been, you know, <laughs> after the lottery, don't trust any draft rumors, <laughs> uh, you know, because at that point, at least on, maybe until like the week of the draft, the day of the draft. But um, yeah, yeah, it's like it's like believe, believe only believe none of what you hear and only half of what you see is <laughs> pretty much what you would want to the approach you should take during this there time during the NBA draft. Well, you know, the Warriors really don't get anything by telling people what they're going to do. Um, in October when the draft is in, uh, you know, mid to late November. So it's, it's going to be, it'll be interesting, obviously, to see where they, where the Warriors do go. But what I will say is on, on Denny, I think when you're looking at the Denny workout and the, the reports that he was blown away, it's not, to me, it's not surprising. Um, you know, we've heard a lot of good things out of people that have seen him in Atlanta. Um, different, you know, draft experts, uh, have, have talked about it. Talks about how he's looked really good out there. He's got he's gotten stronger. He's gotten gotten seems like his jump shots improved. Um, and obviously, if anybody watched him post the the restart of the Israeli uh, basketball playoffs and the Israeli basketball season, then he was it was a different player than he was at the first start of the season. He had the ball in his hands more from Maccabi, and his jump shot seemed improved. So, uh, you know, obviously, you don't overreact to you know a couple months of basketball, but. Um, he looked like a guy that was maybe the most NBA ready player in this entire draft. So for a team like the Golden State Warriors, um, there's obviously some there's obviously some value to bringing in a guy like that for a team like like you said that's ready to compete right away. Um, and then we talk about Wiseman and Edwards. First of all, the scoop does feel a little bit like you know a a response to the idea <laughs> scoop. Um, it does feel. I mean, the way it, the way it plays, maybe it's just. FDA's workout was right after or was right before Edwards and Wiseman, and they just were blown away by everybody. But uh, at the end of the day, they can only pick one guy. And, you know, typically these teams don't – when it comes down to the final the final selection, the, I, rare the teams are selecting between three guys. You know, the most is going to be two. It narrowed down to – so, I, I mean, it's not, they're not going to be like, oh, man, we have all these great options in a draft that most people don't think is that good. Um, so it, just, it, does, it does feel bizarre, but – what they're saying is not 
unbelievable. Because look, Wiseman and Edwards are workout warriors. Those guys are freaks. When, you, when it comes to their athletic ability, their physical profile. Um, so, it, I mean, none of this feels like a lie. It just feels like none of, none of these reports specifically say, so the Warriors now are, are favored to draft this guy, or this guy is now, they're not leaning towards drafting this guy. Um, that hasn't been, that hasn't obviously been, uh, been, been determined, but, you know, of course, you have Anthony Edwards and James Wiseman are physical freaks, and Denny Avdia has a, has a ready-made NBA game that blows you away. Um, none of those are surprises, but uh, still interesting nonetheless. Yeah, so it, it, this is this was interesting. By the way, to be clear, you know, it was Marcus Thompson the second, and and what he said in his article was. You know, he put, you know, Wiseman and Edwards, but he even emphasized, hey, I'm only even writing these names in alphabetical order um, uh, because, or Anthony, or Edwards and Wiseman, I forgot how he did it. But he said it because he was like, you know, it's still very unclear what the Warriors are going to do and who they favor out of any of these guys. But to me, the idea thing, I think, is the more interesting part. I agree with you that I think Edwards and Wiseman seem to be the kind of players that would play they seem to be the guys of the top guys who would have the best workouts. I, I would put Wiseman and Edwards probably one and two, you know. Yes. Um, they're both really athletic. They're both really strong. Um, and they're both really skilled given yeah. their athleticism. So, they have pro day skills. Whereas, yeah, like, you know, so, so yeah, so. You don't really have to think. You, know, you just have to go out there and make shots and, yeah. you know. Show if your athletics in your handle, he, they they can do that. Yeah. yeah. So those guys are gonna impress in workouts. The idea thing is interesting to me because the Warriors, I think everyone looks at as the as one of the prime trade targets uh, in this draft. So to me, I think their strategy in putting out that they love that idea, whether they do or they don't. I tend to think that they do because we you know we had a podcast segment from our New Generation Sports Talk podcast, which we record every week. Um, you can find that on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, Stitcher, and TuneIn. Uh, again, you can find that on New Generation Podcast Network. Uh, we posted a segment on our YouTube channel where the reports early on were that they really, really liked Danny Avdia. So if that was the case that early on, and he saw we saw him play better after that point in time, that was before the pandemic, then yeah. I'm not surprised that you'd be very impressed with Avdia because he's a much better player, I think, than, than what he was back then. But I think letting everyone know that you like him is important because there are going to be, there are teams that we've talked about that really got a bad set um, or a bad beat rather in that NBA draft lottery teams that really need to be drafting in the top three or two that weren't able to, because they fell completely out of the, out of that position, whether it be Cleveland, um, Detroit, there are a lot of teams who really, you know, the Knicks, obviously there, there are a lot of teams that had terrible records that aren't going anywhere that desperately needed um, a franchise caliber player or franchise face, at least if we don't think that this draft is that great um, in this draft. And they're, they're maybe unable to get that guy because they fell so far in the, in the lottery. The Warriors saying they like that deal much, that much may entice someone like Cleveland or, or some of these other teams to say, well, if you like idea that much, we have Intel to suggest that you could get him at again, if I'm throwing Cleveland out there, not to say that I know anything about what Cleveland's doing. You may be able to get him at five, and uh, maybe we'll give you Andre Drummond too, or well, you can't do that because he's a free agent. He's got to do a situation. But either way, um, maybe you work out a deal, and and, and, then, and you move up, and, and then you're able to take that take a Lonzo Ball, or you do take Edwards or Wiseman or one of those guys. But I think that uh, Bob Myers and, and that organization obviously is you know gold standard in terms of you know best organizations in the NBA. So it's smart for them to put out that they like Avdia because I don't think anyone really seriously considered Avdia as a top two prospect in this draft in terms of where he would go in the draft. There may be some people right. who like him that right. much. From a mock draft standpoint. Right, but nobody thought, thought he was going to be a top two pick. So the Warriors saying they like him that much is very important because they may be able to get now, great value we'll from say, him by moving down. What I will say real quick on that point is that this draft is not good. So it, the last the, the draft the last draft that was like this was the in terms of quality in terms of talent level was the the Anthony Bennett draft and remember with that draft Avdia kind of reminds me of Alex Len in that regard where it's like you know remember there was talk that the Cavs really liked Alex Len and then they might draft him at number one and that sounded crazy 
you know, for people that, you know, typically we're doing mock drafts. And, and, yet, so, and yet somehow they did something crazier. <laughs> or, yeah, 100%. But, um, but, you know, it seemed nuts at the time. And like you said, they, they did something even more nuts. But, like, that's my point. You know, like, Anthony Bennett could go number one in that draft. Where people were projecting him to go five, six, seven, eight. Same with Alex Len. You know, I think this draft has that fluctuating nature to it as well, where while, yes, I agree that the the consensus is that Wiseman, Ball, Edwards are the top three, you know, I mean, could someone else go number one? What I will say is that there have been, the, I think the biggest winner in all of this is the Charlotte Hornets from a personal perspective, from a team's personal perspective, because, you know, there's been some talk out there that, you know, the T-Wolves don't really know what they do, but that don't really know what they want to do, but that, Obi Toppin might be their favorite player in this draft. You know, there's talk that it may be between, uh, it may be between Toppin and Ball for Minnesota. And if then if Toppin maybe goes number one, and uh, Avdia goes number two, now you're talking about a situation where Michael Jordan and the Charlotte Hornets get to pick between Ball, Wiseman, and Edwards. Three guys that I would assume are the three guys at the top of their board. So, not a position anyone expected them to be in. A uh, team that jumped up into the top, uh, to the top four to begin with, and now could be now could be in a position where they get they get to pick between their three favorite players at number three. Um, that would be a very very uh, interesting scenario. It may not happen, but even then, if if even one of those two guys goes in the top two, now they get to pick between Edwards and Wiseman probably. So, you know, I think that that's uh, that's an enviable enviable position to be in if you're uh, Charlotte. Unless they really like yeah. Obi Toppin, which they shouldn't, uh, because they have P.J. Washington, or unless they really like Denny Avdia, which I wouldn't really recommend, despite liking Avdia, because yeah, you got Wash, yeah, yeah, you got <laughs> so, you got Miles Bridges. That doesn't make any sense. So, yeah, I mean, you're right. Charlotte could make out like bandits if if this is how it goes, and um, and, and, and I feel like you know you talk about you know Toppin, could he go number one? I think that this is definitely the kind of draft where I think. These mock drafts are going to get blown up. And that's kind of why when I see some of these mock drafts that make bold predictions, um, or bold, you know, guys going way higher than maybe we expect, I don't really go crazy. Some, you know, maybe in past years, I'd be like, these people are just shock value or whatever. But this year, I, I really think almost anything is possible. I mean, I think that there is probably a consensus top three, but I, I don't even know if that's a consensus. You know, again, I think we're hearing idea being really liked. We're hearing Toppin being really liked. I think going into this draft, we didn't anticipate those guys being in other people's top threes. I would argue they weren't. I would argue one of those guys was in my top three. But nonetheless, like the fact that we're seeing so much uh, diversity in opinion on these players, you're going to see guys that we thought were going to go in the top five, maybe fall out of the top ten. You're going to see guys that we thought were going to go out of the top ten, fly up really high into the top ten. I, I think that this is going to be, we're going to see guys that maybe we thought were going to be first round picks going to the second round. I, I think this is going to be nuts. So and do we, do we think I think that, anything's uh, possible. So do we think that, uh, you know, uh, the Warriors are going to get blown away by uh, Devin Vassell's uh, workout? <laughs> Look, man, again, now, that, now something like that, it would be a much harder sell, I think, for teams to be like, oh, well, now we definitely got to try to trade Yeah, off. now we know, all right, this is just disinformation, <laughs> you know. But, um, mm-hmm. but, yeah. but the, idea, the, the idea news makes a lot of sense. And I think he's a great fit, you know. I, I think that he, he makes a lot of sense for them, Um because they right. need an Andre Iguodala type, and I think that he fits some of those attributes, you know. So, uh, so I get to like their, the the love for him there, but also, you know, it's hard not to be enticed by the talent that we see from Edwards and and Wiseman. So, um, we'll see what the end up what the Warriors end up doing. Hope you guys enjoyed this uh, segment of our draft chatter um, series. Of course, you can catch all of these videos on this channel, New Generation Media. If you like this video, make sure you like and give a comment. What do you guys think the Warriors? Are doing here what do you think they're plotting do you think they really love idea that much or is this a plot to get some team to trade up to give them a bunch of assets or give them maybe a veteran player to help them uh win now so leave a comment on what you guys think is going on make sure you subscribe to the channel for more draft content and other content we do beyond sports of course we do superheroes and star wars as well so keep it locked here thank you guys for checking this out for kendall i'm ej take it easy guys peace